In this video, I'm going to derive the variance of beta naught hat. And as we know, this expression over here is equal to the sample mean of y minus beta 1 hat times the sample mean of x. And in this expression, this term here is a random variable, and this term is also a random variable. This is the estimator for beta 1. And for this expression, I can simplify this to variance of the sample mean of y plus the variance of beta 1 hat times the sample mean of x, and then minus 2 of the covariance between sample mean of y and beta 1 hat times the sample mean of x. So this negative sign comes from this negative sign over here. So in order to evaluate the variance, I need to evaluate these three individual components and then add them up. So let's first focus on this expression. So the variance of the sample mean of y, this is just equal to the variance of 1 over n times the sum of all the n terms. And if you observe the structure of this term over here, you'll see that this is just equal to the variance of some constant times y1 plus some constant times y2 all the way to some constant times yn. And as we've explained in the last video, this expression here, the variance of this expression is just equal to a1 squared times the variance of y1 plus a2 squared times the variance of y2 and so on all the way to the nth term and so we can apply this expression to this expression as well so you see you, got, you can see that in this case it just happens that all the constants a1 a2 a n are all equal to 1 over n so in the end you just have 1 over n square times variance of y1 plus variance of y2 and so on all the way to variance of yn and the variance of the y terms are all equal to sigma square. So all these terms are sigma square. And you can see that we have a total of n sigma ter uh, sigma square terms. So in the end, this expression in the bracket is just equal to n times sigma square. So this whole thing is just equal to sigma square divided by n. So we found this first term. This is this expression here is equal to sigma square divided by n. So next, let's now focus on this term over here. So we now want to find the variance of beta 1 hat times the sample mean of x. Now the sample mean of x is just a constant term, so I can just pull this out and then square it. Remember to always square the term if you're pulling a constant term outside of a variance. And then we have the variance of beta 1 hat. And we found this from the last video. So we call from the result of the last video, we found that this is equal to sigma squared divided by s double x, where s double x is equal to the sum of all the x terms minus the uh, sample mean of x squared. So now we're essentially done for this term. So this term over here, so this variance term over here, this is just equal to sigma squared times the sample mean of x squared divided by s double x. And now finally, we need to focus on this term. And it will turn out that this term here is actually equal to 0. So this is what we're going to show now. We're going to show that this term here is equal to zero. So the expression we need to evaluate is the covariance of the sample mean of y with beta 1 hat times the sample mean of x. And then for covariance, I can always pull a constant out. This has something to do with the nature of how covariance is defined, so I can just pull this constant out. So you can see that all we have to do is to focus on this term. So I'm just going to ignore this sample mean of x term, and I'm just going to focus on this covariance term. So right now what I want to find is the covariance between the sample mean of y and beta 1 hat. And then in order to do that, I'm just going to write these expressions out explicitly. So the sample mean of y is just equal to this. And then beta 1 hat, I'm just going to express this in a way similar to what I did in the last video. So instead, instead of using i as well, I'm going to use the subscript j, just to avoid confusion. So xj minus sample mean of x, yj divided by s double x. And so this is the expression that we have to evaluate now. In order to evaluate the expression that we have so far, I'm going to invoke a rule concerning the evaluation of a covariance. So if you want to find the covariance between a random variable x and an expression that looks something like this, where all the a terms are constants and all the y terms are random variables, 
then this expression is just equal to a1 times the covariance between x and y1 plus a2 times the covariance between x and y2 and so on. So I'm not going to prove this rule in this video. If you're interested, you can look it up, but I'm just going to invoke this rule to simplify the expression that we have over here. So you can see that this term over here looks exactly like this term over here. So now we can invoke this rule. And you can see that for the corresponding a terms for this expression, the aj for the jth term is just equal to xj minus the sample mean of x divided by s double x. So now I'm going to use this rule to evaluate this expression over here. So this is just equal to, first of all, a1, so x1 minus the sample mean of x divided by s double x. And then the covariance between the first term, which is just the sample mean of y, I'll just write this out as the sample mean of y again, and then y1. And the same goes for the second term, so x2 minus the sample mean of x divided by s double x, covariance between the sample mean of y and y2. And then this keeps on going all the way to the nth term. And so this is what we get, so covariance between sample mean of y and yn. And now what I want to do is define the covariance between the individual y terms and the sample mean. So now what I want to do is define the covariance between the sample mean and the jth y term. And now I can, I can uh, re-express the sample mean of y as the sum again. And then for this rule over here, it actually works both ways. So it doesn't matter if you flip uh, the order of the x and this summation term over here. So this same rule applies to this expression over here. So now this expression is going to be equal to 1 over n covariance between y1, yj plus 1 over n covariance between y2, yj and so on. So this is going to keep on going until eventually it reaches the jth term, so covariance between yj and yj itself. And then it keeps on going all the way till it reaches the end, till it reaches covariance between yn and yj. Now, by definition, by the initial assumptions of our simple linear regression model, all the y terms are uncorrelated with one another. So y1 and yj, this will have a correlation, have a covariance of zero. Since they're uncorrelated, that's why the covariance is equal to zero. This is also equal to zero. And all the terms are equal to zero except for this term. Now the covariance of a random variable with, it, with itself, that's just equal to its variance. So this is just the variance of yj. And as we know, the variance of a y term, that's just equal to sigma squared. So this entire term over here, so the covariance between a sample mean of y and an individual uh, y term is just equal to sigma squared divided by n. So don't forget there's also a n here in the denominator. So this is what this expression is going to be equal to. And you can see that the same argument applies to each and every single one of these covariance terms. So all of these terms, they're all going to be equal to sigma squared divided by n. So actually what we have now is now that we have a sum that is equal to x1 minus the sample mean of x divided by s double x, sigma squared divided by n, plus x2 minus the sample mean of x, s double x, sigma squared divided by n, and this keeps on going all the way till the nth term. And you, as you can see from all these terms, they all have quite a few common terms. You can isolate these common terms, and we can pull them outside of a bracket. So sigma squared divided by n, s double x. And inside the bracket, we have x1 minus the sample mean of x plus x2 minus the sample mean of x all the way till the nth term. And then you can just express this as a sum. And as we know, this expression here is equal to zero. We've encountered this expression many, many times. So you can just sum all the x terms. That's just equal to n times the sample mean of x. And then you're minusing the uh, sample mean of x n times. So this this is this whole thing is just going to be equal to zero. So this entire sum is just equal to zero. So this whole thing is equal to zero. And this is what exactly what we wanted to prove. Now we've proved that the covariance between the sample mean of y and beta 1 hat is equal to zero. So this entire term here is equal to zero. So that means this term here is indeed equal to zero. And so the variance of beta naught hat is just equal to the sum of these two terms. And of course I can rearrange this a bit by pulling the sigma square out. That's a common term between the two. And I can express everything like this. 
So this would be the variance of beta not hat. 